when we talk about domestic, regional, and international justice system, yes. what kind of uh, relationship do you envisage, especially to tackle, you know, the difficult crimes of transnational yes. and international crimes? Yes, I envisage two types of relationships. One is a legal relationship, which is obviously spelt out in treaties establishing uh, regional and international courts. Um, an example is uh, where there's a uh, provision for the uh, principle of complementarity as it is in the ICC, uh, where an, an international court such as the ICC can only intervene where domestic courts cannot handle these cases, either due to questions of capacity or due to the fact that they want to shield certain peoples from uh, the jurisdiction of domestic courts. So I think that's the first relationship that I envisage. But over and above, a forum such as we've had today uh, is, uh, gives room for judges or an opportunity for judges to network. And you never know, uh, in future, you might have a question or two about what you are doing in your domestic setting. And uh, due to the networking that you've uh, had, uh, you can easily consult some of your colleagues who you've already met in a forum such as this. Yeah. Um, another issue, of course, I've realized is that uh, for us to have effective uh, justice delivery, yeah. um, the investigation, the prosecution and the judiciary somehow have to work together. Yeah. And um, of course, I've realized that we are having separate forums, for mm. example, for example, for investigators and prosecutors, yeah. separate mm. from the judiciary. And always, every time you listen, there's always a complaint yeah. about the disconnect yes. between the judiciary, mm. the prosecution, and the investigators. Yes. Um, I mean, what would really be your view? Um, I think all these entities which are there in order to ensure that there's delivery of justice should have an opportunity uh, to sit together and iron out the problems or challenges that uh, they face because uh, delivery of justice is not only at the time when the case is in the court but it starts from the time when the investigation takes place um, it starts at the time when the prosecution takes over and they bring a case in the court so it will be very important to bring together all these stakeholders in order for them to understand the minds of each other there's a way the judges think uh, or a way they determine cases uh, given the laws establishing the courts. Uh, but the policemen who, who deal with investigations might not understand this and this would hamper uh, delivery of justice. Obviously, uh, this interaction should uh, be there in as far as uh, discussing uh, uh, how to iron out the challenges. But uh, we should also understand that uh, the courts and these other entities should uh, uh, stay at arm's length in certain matters so as not to be viewed or to be perceived to lack independence because you are very cosy with these other entities of, uh, or, or in the justice uh, sector. Again, when we look at international and transnational crimes, uh, specifically the, trans, uh, the transnational crimes, we've seen the sophistication, you know, of the yes. perpetrators uh, and, uh, you know, the kind of technology that they use to commit yes. these crimes. So what do you see as a solution to addressing this kind of sophistication mm. to match, you know, the, 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 the initiatives that are taken to deal with them? Yes. Um, I think, uh, as it was rightly pointed out in the conference today, um, there's probably need for more training for judges, prosecutors, the policemen who deal with these sophisticated uh, areas. Um, but obviously there's no one size fits all. Uh, I could only offer broad uh, recommendations. And the first recommendation is to, depending on what transboundary crime is prevalent in a given country, uh, it will be advisable to have a specialized court with specialized judges who understand these sophisticated areas uh, like financial crimes which are extremely sophisticated. That's number one. Number two, um, uh, another solution would be, the second solution would definitely be uh, that um, um, when judges are handling these matters, they should op be open to the idea of inviting experts in this domain in order to educate them more about the sophistication of the cases before them. And uh, this would go a long way in, uh, in uh, helping the judges to come up with uh, 
with a, with a very good judgment. Um, I think the third uh, proposal which I could uh, make is uh, we also need the civil society in, uh, in our region to be a bit active, the, the specialized civil society. And they could come in form of, uh, of uh, the, uh, the friends of the court or amicus curiae. And this would help as, uh, as well. So we look forward to the civil societies being more engaged in the processes of the court in order to uh, help the courts in these sophisticated areas.